Welcome back to this introduction to control theory. Today, we're going to delve into a crucial aspect of control systems, transfer functions, and block diagrams. Now, I promise, we'll keep the math at bay and focus more on the concepts. Let's start with a brief recap. In previous videos, we introduced the fundamental concepts of control systems and discussed the importance of mathematical models to describe system behavior. Today, We'll build on that foundation by exploring two key tools that help us analyze and design control systems, transfer functions, and block diagrams. Imagine control systems as dynamic landscapes, where inputs and outputs dance together in a choreography dictated by the underlying mathematics. Previously, we established the importance of modeling these interactions. Today, we're equipping ourselves with the tools to act as a compass in navigating this intricate terrain. Now, you might be wondering, why are we delving into transfer functions and block diagrams? Think of them as the secret code to deciphering the language of control systems. Transfer functions provide us with a concise way of expressing complex relationships, like having a Rosetta Stone for system dynamics. Block diagrams, on the other hand, are our roadmap guiding us through the intricate network of interconnected components. My goal today is to bridge the gap between the abstract and the practical. I want to empower you with tools that not only make sense on paper, but become invaluable assets in the real world of engineering. So grab your metaphorical explorer hats as we embark on this journey to unravel the mysteries of transfer functions and block diagrams. As we journey through today's discussion, remember that our focus is on understanding these, these concepts conceptually. We'll avoid getting bogged down by complex mathematical intricacies, opting instead for a more intuitive exploration by the end of this session, you'll not only grasp what transfer functions and block diagrams are, but also appreciate their role as indispensable tools in the Control Engineer's Toolkit. Transfer functions serve as the storytellers of dynamic systems. They're mathematical expressions that narrate the relationship between input and output of a system. Think of them as a concise and elegant way of encapsulating the behavior of a dynamic system without the need for exhaustive mathematical details. To put it in simpler terms, if we consider our control system as a black box, a transfer function is like the user manual, describing how different inputs lead to specific outputs. It abstracts the intricacies of the system into a manageable form allowing engineers to analyze and predict system responses efficiently. Transfer functions, in the realm of control theory, serve as elegant abstractions that allow us to understand and predict the behavior of dynamic systems. Imagine them as the translators between the language of mathematical models and the real-world dynamics of a system. At its core, a transfer function is a mathematical representation that describes the relationship between the input and output of a dynamic system. It encapsulates the essence of how the system responds to different inputs over time. Picture a control system as a sophisticated gadget, and the transfer function is its user manual. This manual provides a concise guide on how to operate and understand the system. By manipulating the inputs, the knobs and levers, described in the manual, engineers can predict the resulting outputs, steering the system's behavior. The beauty of transfer functions lies in their ability to simplify complex system dynamics. Instead of delving into the intricacies of differential equations that govern a system's behavior, transfer functions offer a high-level view. They distill the system's response into a manageable form, making it accessible for analysis and design without drowning in the mathematical details. Think of transfer functions as a shortcut to system understanding. Rather than navigating through the labyrinth of mathematical equations, engineers can leverage transfer functions to gain insights into how a system behaves under various conditions. 
This abstraction becomes particularly crucial when dealing with large and complex systems, allowing engineers to focus on the big picture. Much like a blueprint for a building, transfer functions provide a dynamic blueprint for control systems. Engineers can use these blueprints to design and optimize the performance of systems, ensuring they meet specific criteria and respond appropriately to changes in the environment. Understanding transfer functions opens the door to a world where engineers can fine-tune the behavior of systems, predict responses to different inputs, and design control strategies that align with desired outcomes. In the following sections, we'll explore how transfer functions are derived from ordinary differential equations and how they influence the behavior of dynamic systems. So buckle up as we unravel the mysteries behind these mathematical storytellers. To make it more tangible, let's talk about how we derive transfer functions from ordinary differential equations. Think of transfer functions as a shortcut, a way to understand and predict system responses without getting tangled in complex mathematical equations. Now, let's demystify the process by obtaining transfer functions from ordinary differential equations. When we have a mathematical model of a system represented by ODEs, extracting a transfer function is like translating from one language to another. It's a translation that simplifies the understanding of the system's behavior. Think of it this way. Instead of grappling with the complexities of differential equations, we can use transfer functions as a shortcut. They provide a clear, high-level view of how the system responds to different inputs, enabling us to focus on the bigger picture without drowning in the details. In the intricate dance of dynamic systems, ODEs often serve as the choreographers, dictating the movements of the system over time. Deriving transfer functions from ODEs is akin to translating this complex dance into a more understandable and concise language. ODEs provide a detailed description of a system's behavior, capturing how variables change concerning time. However, these equations can be intricate and challenging to handle, especially when dealing with complex systems. Transfer functions act as translators, simplifying the dynamics expressed in ODEs into a more manageable form. Consider a system described by ODEs as a musical composition, with each variable playing a distinct note. Transfer functions help us understand the melody by highlighting the relationships between the input notes and the resulting output symphony. By distilling the ODEs into transfer functions, we create a musical score that tells us how changes in the input notes influence the overall composition. Deriving transfer functions is like finding a shortcut through the mathematical maze. Instead of navigating through the intricate details of ODEs, engineers can leverage transfer functions to gain a more intuitive grasp of the system's response. This abstraction doesn't negate the importance of ODEs, but provides a higher-level perspective that facilitates analysis and design. The process of deriving transfer functions involves several steps. Engineers start by defining the system's equations using ODEs, then, through mathematical manipulations and Laplace transforms, the equations are transformed into the frequency domain, giving rise to transfer functions. This step-by-step -step process is akin to decoding the system's language, revealing its secrets in a more accessible form. Transfer functions, derived from ODEs, offer a visual representation of a system's dynamics. Each term in the transfer function corresponds to a specific aspect of the system's behavior, providing engineers with a clear picture of how inputs propagate through the system to influence outputs. This visual insight is invaluable for designing effective control strategies. Understanding how transfer functions emerge from ODEs is like deciphering a code that unlocks the language of dynamic systems. In the subsequent sections, we'll explore how these transfer functions influence the behavior of systems and how engineers leverage them to design control systems effectively.
So as we journey through this translation process, envision it as revealing the hidden poetry within the mathematical prose of ODEs. Now, let's shift our focus to block diagrams. These are graphical representations of dynamic systems that help us visualize the flow of signals and interactions between various components. Think of it as a roadmap guiding us through the system's architecture. As we venture into the realm of block diagrams, imagine these diagrams as the architectural blueprints of our control systems. They offer us a visual language to understand and communicate the intricate web of interactions between various components. If transfer functions are the storytellers, block diagrams are the illustrators, giving life to the narrative. In the intricate world of control systems, where abstract concepts and mathematical representations abound, the power of visualization emerges as a guiding light. Block diagrams serve as the architect's blueprints, allowing engineers to visually comprehend the interplay of components and signals within a dynamic system. Picture a control system as a grand architectural structure, and the block diagram is the graphical representation of its design. Each block in the diagram represents a component, a process, or a subsystem, akin to the building blocks that form the foundation of a structure. Lines connecting these blocks symbolize the flow of signals, much like the conduits and pathways in a complex building. Block diagrams provide an intuitive roadmap, offering a way to navigate through the intricate network of interactions within a control system. As engineers, it's akin to having a treasure map that guides us through the hidden treasures of system architecture. By following the lines and connections, we unveil the relationships between different elements, gaining insights into how the system functions as a cohesive whole. One of the remarkable features of block diagrams lies in their ability to distill complexity into simplicity. Instead of grappling with mathematical equations and abstract models, engineers can grasp the essence of a system by examining its graphical representation. This simplicity is a powerful tool for both understanding and communicating complex ideas within a team or across disciplines. Think of a block diagram as a dynamic storyboard. Each block contributes to the plot, and the lines connecting them narrate the flow of information, energy, or signals. This dynamic storytelling allows engineers to envision how changes in one part of the system ripple through the entire structure, like a well-choreographed performance where every element plays a crucial role. Beyond mere representation, block diagrams serve as tools for system design and optimization. Engineers can manipulate and rearrange blocks, experimenting with different connections, and visualize the potential impact on system performance. This visual experimentation is akin to an artist sketching variations on a canvas, exploring possibilities before committing to a final masterpiece. In essence, the power of visualization through block diagrams transcends the traditional boundaries of technical documentation. It becomes a language that bridges disciplines, allowing engineers to communicate ideas effectively and collaboratively. As we journey through the creation and interpretation of block diagrams, envision them not just as static illustrations, but as dynamic guides unveiling the intricate dance of signals and components within the world of control systems. Consider a block diagram as a snapshot of your control system's anatomy. Each block represents a component or process, and the lines connecting them symbolize the flow of signals. It's akin to having X-ray vision into the inner workings of your system, allowing you to see how signals traverse through the different components to produce the desired outcome. I'm sure many of you are wondering how to create block diagrams. Don't worry, it's not as daunting as it may seem. We'll walk through the process step by step, using practical examples to illustrate how block diagrams can simplify complex systems. Now, the idea of creating block diagrams might sound a bit daunting, but fear not, 
It's a skill worth mastering. Picture it as arranging a puzzle. Each block is a puzzle piece. And your task is to connect them in a way that forms a coherent and functional picture of your system. We'll walk through the system step by step, using practical examples to demystify the art of creating block diagrams. Whether you're dealing with a simple system or complex control strategies, block diagrams provide a bird's eye view of this that simplifies the comprehension of intricate control structures. Creating block diagrams is akin to crafting visual poetry that captures the essence of dynamic systems architecture. Let's walk through the process step by step, unveiling the artistry involved in transforming abstract control strategies in the tangible graphical representations. Begin by identifying key components or subsystems of your control system. These could be physical elements like sensors, actuators, or processes, or abstract concepts representing control strategies and algorithms. Each of these components becomes a building block in your diagram. Assign a block to represent each identified component. The blocks serve as visual encapsulations of these components, offering a simplified representation that conveys their function and purpose. It's like sketching characters in a play, each with its unique role in the unfolding drama. Consider how these components interact and exchange information. Use lines to connect the blocks, symbolizing the flow of signals, data, or energy between them. These connections form a dynamic pathway through which the system's elements communicate and collaborate. Pay attention to directionality of the lines. Are signals flowing from one component to another? Is there feedback between the components? The directionality of lines conveys a causal relationship within the system providing a visual narrative of how changes in one part affect the others. Enhance the clarity of your diagram by adding arrows to indicate the direction of signal flow. Consider including annotations to provide additional information about the purpose or function of specific components. These visual cues contribute to a more comprehensive understanding of the system. Creating block diagrams is an iterative process. Don't hesitate to revise and refine your diagram as your understanding evolves. Experiment with different arrangements and connections to find the most intuitive and informative representation. Much like refining a piece of artwork, each iteration brings you closer to capturing the essence of the system. For large and complex systems, Consider creating hierarchical block diagrams, breaking down the system and the subsystems. Create block diagrams for each, and then combine them into an overarching diagram. This hierarchical approach simplifies the visualization of intricate systems. Leverage software tools for creating block diagrams. These tools offer not only the precision, but also the flexibility to experiment with different layouts and structures. The visual nature of these tools facilitates collaboration within multidisciplinary teams. Creating block diagrams is not just about technical documentation. It's a form of storytelling. The arrangement of blocks and the flow of lines tells a narrative of how components collaborate to achieve the system's objectives. As we navigate through the creation process, envision block diagrams as dynamic blueprints that unravel the secrets of control systems in a language that transcends mathematical barriers. One of the exciting aspects is understanding how transfer functions influence system behavior. How do the changes in the transfer functions impact the overall response? We'll explore this relationship without drowning in equations. Now that we've introduced the concept of transfer functions, let's unravel the intriguing relationship between these mathematical entities and the actual behavior of our control system. Think of transfer functions as the storytellers that influence the plot of our system's dynamics. Consider a transfer function as a set of instructions for our control system. It tells us how the system will respond to different inputs, acting as a guide 
to understand the intricate dance between causes, inputs, and effects, outputs. By comprehending this relationship, engineers gain a powerful tool to predict and manipulate system behavior without immersing themselves in the intricacies of differential equations. In the captivating dance between transfer functions and system behavior, we embark on a journey to unravel the intricate relationship that shapes the dynamics of control systems. Picture this as lifting the curtain on the theoretical performance, where transfer functions take center stage, influencing the narrative of the system's behavior. Envision transfer functions as dynamic actors within the play of control systems. Each transfer function steps onto the stage with a unique role, defining how the system responds to different inputs. These actors, like characters in a story, contribute to the unfolding drama of system behavior. Transfer functions hold the script that dictates the system's response to external stimuli. Changes in the transfer function alter the script, influencing the tempo, intensity, and overall performance of the system. Understanding this relationship is like decoding the language in which the system communicates its responses. Altering transfer functions can have profound effects on system stability and performance. Just as changing a character's lines might shift the mood of a play, modifying a transfer function can impact the stability and responsiveness of control systems. Engineers navigate this dynamic relationship to design systems that meet specific performance criteria. Delve into the frequency good domain to gain insights into how transfer functions influence system behavior. Frequency responses unveil how different frequencies of inputs are amplified or attenuated by the transfer function. This analysis is like exploring the musical range of our dynamic actors, understanding how they harmonize or clash in response to different tunes. Consider the robustness and adaptability of the system in the face of disturbances or changes. Transfer functions play a pivotal role in defining the system's ability to maintain stability and performance under varying conditions. Engineers fine-tune the transfer functions to ensure that the system remains resilient amidst uncertainties and external disturbances. As we unravel this relationship, it's crucial to connect theory to practical implications. How do changes in transfer functions impact real-world systems. How can engineers leverage this understanding to design control strategies that align with desired outcomes? This section bridges the gap between the theoretical insights and actionable strategies. Use visual aids, mental models, and practical examples to help unravel the relationship between transfer functions and system behavior. Visualizing the impact of transfer functions allows engineers to intuitively grasp the consequences of design choices, fostering a deeper understanding of system dynamics. Now, imagine tweaking a parameter in a transfer function as if you were adjusting the volume on a music player. Small changes can orchestrate significant variations in system behavior. We'll explore how alterations in transfer functions directly impact response times, stability, and overall performance. This exploration is like adjusting the tempo of our control system symphony, influencing the rhythm and harmony of its response. Within the tapestry of control systems, the dynamics of change encapsulate the transformative power of alterations in transfer functions. As we explore this dynamic landscape, envision it as a symphony where modifying a transfer function is akin to orchestrating the evolving melody of the system's response. Think of transfer functions as levers that engineers can manipulate to investigate change in a system. These levers, when pulled or adjusted, don't just alter the mathematical expressions. They set in motion a cascade of effects that reshape the entire performance. These dynamics of change lie in understanding how these adjustments reverberate 
through the system. One aspect of change lies in the system's response time. Adjusting transfer functions can expedite or delay the way a system reacts to external stimuli. It's like fine-tuning the responsiveness of a musical instrument, altering the timing at which it responds to different notes, influencing the overall rhythm. Changes in transfer functions have direct implications on system stability. Engineers navigate the delicate balance between stability and instability when modifying transfer functions. It's akin to choreographing a dance where maintaining equilibrium is crucial for a graceful performance, yet introducing controlled instability adds flair and adaptability. Consider the phenomenon of resonance and amplification. Altering the transfer function can accentuate certain frequencies, creating resonance, much like amplifying the intensity of a particular musical note in a composition. Understanding these dynamics is key to designing systems that resonate harmoniously under specific conditions. The dynamics of change involve navigating trade-offs. Enhancing one aspect of system performance may come at the expense of another. Engineers must carefully weigh these trade-offs, recognizing that every change to a transfer function has nuanced implications for the overall system behavior. Dynamic systems must adapt to external disturbances. By manipulating transfer functions, engineers equip the system with the ability to adapt and maintain performance in the face of changing conditions. It's like adjusting the sails on a ship to navigate smoothly through varying winds. The dynamics of change are not static. They unfold in real time. Engineers might need to make on-the-fly adjustments to transfer functions to optimize system performance dynamically. This requires a deep understanding of the system's response to ensure timely and effective adaptations. The impact of changing transfer functions can be visualized through block diagrams. As transfer functions evolve, the connections and interactions between blocks shift, offering engineers a virtual representation of the evolving dynamics. This visualization aids in grasping the systemic effects of change. Understanding the dynamics of change in transfer functions is akin to mastering the art of improvisation in a musical performance. It involves a keen sense of timing, an awareness of the harmonies and dissonances, and the ability to adapt to an ever-changing rhythm of system behavior. As we proceed, keep this notion of dynamic change in mind, for it is the heartbeat that animates the symphony of control systems. Understanding this relationship allows engineers to fine-tune control strategies, ensuring optimal system performance under various conditions. It's like having a magic wand to sculpt the behavior of our dynamic systems without delving into the mathematical spellbook. One of the exciting aspects of this discussion is how transfer functions serve as a bridge between theoretical models and real-world outcomes. We won't get bogged down in equations, but rather, we'll focus on the tangible impact, how changes in the transfer functions manifest in the actual behavior of our control systems. In the exploration of transfer functions and system behavior, bridging the theoretical understanding with practical applications is the key to unlocking the true potential of control systems. This section serves as the bridge between the abstract theories we've discussed and the tangible impact on real-world engineering. Theoretical discussions on transfer functions gain significance when we bring them into the realm of real-world applications. It's not merely about manipulating equations. It's about understanding how changes in transfer functions translate into tangible outcomes in the systems we design and control. Engineers bridge theory and practice by leveraging transfer functions to design systems with specific outcomes. Whether it's maintaining a stable temperature in a chemical process or achieving smooth cruising in an automotive system, the ability to predict and control system behavior through transfer functions is invaluable in achieving engineering objectives. 
Transfer functions act as guides for engineers to optimize control strategies. By understanding the impact of different transfer functions on system behavior, engineers can fine-tune control algorithms to ensure optimal performance. This optimization process is the bridge between the theoretical elegance of transfer functions and the practical efficiency of control strategies. Theoretical insights into transfer functions pave the way for robust system design. Engineers consider various scenarios and disturbances, exploring how the system responds under different conditions. This anticipatory approach, rooted in theoretical understanding, leads to designs that are not just effective in ideal conditions, but also resilient in the face of uncertainties. Practical examples serve as the litmus test for theoretical knowledge acquired. By applying transfer functions to real-world examples, engineers validate their theoretical understanding. The process of connecting theory to practice enhances comprehension and ensures theoretical models accurately represent the complexities of the physical world. The bridge between theory and practice often involves an iterative design process. Engineers don't merely stop at theoretical models. They experiment, iterate, and refine their designs based on real-world performance. This iterative loop ensures that theoretical knowledge evolves with practical insights, leading to continuous improvement in system design. Bridging theory and practice is not only about designing systems, but also about educating and training the next generation of engineers. Practical examples rooted in theoretical concepts form the foundation of engineering education, equipping aspiring engineers with the skills to apply theoretical knowledge to solve real-world challenges. The ability to bridge theory and practice facilitates effective communication across inter interdisciplinary teams. Engineers, mathematicians, and domain experts collaborate seamlessly when the language of transfer functions serves as a common ground. This interdisciplinary collaboration is essential for holistic system design. In essence, bridging theory and practice in the realm of transfer functions is about transforming mathematical elegance into practical engineering wisdom. As we move forward, consider how this bridge extends beyond equations and models, connecting the theoretical elegance of control theory with the tangible impact on systems that shape our technological landscape. As we progress, envision transfer functions as dynamic actors in a play, each with its unique role in shaping the narrative of our control system story. Understanding this relationship empowers engineers to craft control strategies that align with specific performance goals. To make things even clearer, let's work through some real-world examples. We'll use diagrams and practical scenarios to demonstrate how transfer functions and block diagrams come together in actual control systems. Now that we've laid the groundwork for understanding transfer functions and their impact on system behavior, let's dive into the practical realm. Practical examples are where theory meets reality and engineers can witness the tangible application of the concepts we've discussed. Imagine a scenario where precise control of temperature is crucial, such as a chemical process. Let's explore how transfer functions and block diagrams can be applied to model and optimize a temperature control system. Begin by identifying the key components. In this case, there's a heater that influences the temperature of the reactor. Derive a transfer function for the heater dynamics, capturing how changes in input, electric power to the heater, affect the output, temperature of the reactor. The system isn't just about the heater. There's a reactor with its own dynamics. Develop a transfer function that represents how the temperature of the reactor responds to changes in the heater input. This involves considering the thermal properties of the reactor and the heat exchange mechanisms. With transfer functions in hand, create a block diagram. Each block represents a component, 
the heater, the reactor, and potentially sensors or controllers. Connect these blocks with lines representing the flow of signals, depicting how changes in the heater input propagate through the system to influence the reactor's temperature. Analyze the block diagram to predict how adjustments in the heater input will impact the temperature of the reactor. Does the system respond quickly to changes? Is it stable under various conditions? This analysis is crucial for engineers designing control strategies to maintain a stable temperature within the desired range. Introduce a controller into the system to enhance temperature regulation. This might involve feedback loops where sensors measure the reactor temperature and the controller adjusts the heat input to maintain the desired temperature set point. Derive the transfer function for the controller and integrate it into the block diagram. Conduct sensitivity analysis to understand how changes in parameters, such as the heater's power or reactor's thermal properties, affect the overall system. This analysis guides engineers to optimize the system for robust performance under different conditions. Consider practical aspects, such as physical constraints on the heater or the response time of the reactor. Engineers need to balance theoretical models with real-world limitations to design a temperature control system that is not only effective in simulations, but also feasible and reliable in practical applications. The design process is often iterative. Engineers might go back and refine it the transfer functions, adjust the control strategy, or modify the block diagram based on experimental results or real-world observations. This iterative approach ensures that the theoretical model aligns with practical performance. By exploring the temperature control system, we witness the direct application of transfer functions and block diagrams in designing and optimizing a dynamic system. This example illustrates the practical utility of control theory in addressing real-world challenges and underscores the importance of a systemic and iterative design process. As we move forward, keep these insights in mind as we explore more examples and applications in the realm of control theory. Imagine you're driving on a highway and you activate your car's cruise control to maintain a steady speed. This seemingly simple feature is the result of a sophisticated control system at play. Your car's speed is influenced by various factors, including how much you press on the gas pedal, the throttle input. We can think of your car's behavior as a kind of dance between your input and the car's response, like a dance partner adjusting to your lead. Cruise control is like having an intelligent co-pilot. It continuously checks your current speed against the speed you've set, and based on the difference, it adjusts the throttle to keep you cruising at your desired speed. It's akin to your co-pilot gently nudging the gas pedal to maintain a consistent pace. If we were to draw a picture, a block diagram, of this dance, we'd have blocks representing the vehicle dynamics, the cruise control strategy, and maybe a block for the speed sensor. Lines connecting these blocks show how information flows, creating a visual representation of the dance steps between your actions and the car's response. When you set a new speed, the cruise control system works to get you there smoothly. It ensures that your car doesn't overshoot or lag behind, creating a balanced dance. Analyzing the system involves understanding how cruise control adapts to your preferences and external factors like wind resistance and changes in the road incline. Imagine adjusting the sensitivity of your cruise control. That's like fine-tuning the responsiveness of your dance partner. A well-adjusted system makes subtle and efficient moves, preventing abrupt changes that might make your driving experience uncomfortable. Your cruise control needs to be resilient. It shouldn't get thrown off balance by a gust of wind or a slope in the road. Just like a good dance partner adapts to unexpected moves, 
Your cruise control should handle disturbances without causing discomfort or abrupt changes. In the real world, your car has limits. There's a maximum speed it can reach, and it can't instantly go from 0 to 60. A cruise control system respects these limits, ensuring that the dance between your inputs and the car's responses is not only efficient, but also safe and within the capabilities of your vehicle. The beauty of cruise control lies in its seamless integration into your driving experience. It's not just a theoretical concept. It's a practical solution that undergoes real-world testing. Engineers validate these systems on the road to make sure they work as expected in diverse driving conditions. In essence, the automotive cruise control example showcases how control systems make driving more comfortable and efficient. The dance between your actions and the car's response is orchestrated by control strategies that balance precision, adaptability, and safety. As we explore more examples, Keep in mind how these control systems enhance our everyday experiences, turning complex dynamics into smooth, predictable, and enjoyable journeys. By delving into these practical examples, we move beyond theory and witness how transfer functions and block diagrams play a pivotal role in real-world engineering scenarios. These tools empower engineers to model, analyze, and optimize control systems for diverse applications, from chemical processes to automotive technologies. Beyond the theoretical and mathematical constructs, the real-world impact of control systems is profound, influencing various aspects of our lives and shaping the technologies that surround us. Imagine a daily commute without traffic lights or intelligent traffic management systems. Control systems optimize traffic flow, minimize congestion, and enhance the efficiency of transportation networks. This not only saves time, but also reduces fuel consumption and environmental impact. Control systems play a pivotal role in smart grids and energy management. They ensure efficient distribution of electricity, balance supply and demand, and facilitate the integration of renewable energy sources. This results in a more resilient and sustainable energy infrastructure. Manufacturing processes rely heavily on control systems for precision and consistency. Whether it's maintaining temperature in a chemical reactor or ensuring accurate positioning of a robotic assembly line, control systems contribute to the high quality and reliable production of goods. The aviation industry relies heavily on control systems for aircraft stability and safety. Flight control systems adjust aeronautical surfaces to maintain stability, respond to pilot commands, and ensure safe takeoffs and landings. This level of control is critical for passenger safety and the efficiency of air travel. In the healthcare sector, control systems are integral to various medical devices, from regulating drug infusions in intravenous pumps to controlling the operation of medical imaging equipment. These systems ensure precise and safe healthcare delivery, impacting patient outcomes. Environmental monitoring systems leverage control algorithms to analyze data from sensors and make real-time decisions. This is evident in applications such as water quality management, where control systems help maintain optimal conditions for aquatic ecosystems and ensure the stability of water resources. The stability and efficiency of communication networks, including the Internet, rely on sophisticated control systems. These systems manage data traffic, optimize routing, and ensure seamless connectivity contributing to a smooth and reliable digital experience for users worldwide. The development of autonomous vehicles represents a frontier where control systems are pushing the boundaries of innovation. These systems navigate complex environments, make split-second decisions, and contribute to the realization of future mobility solutions that prioritize safety and efficiency. 
Control systems, equipped with adaptive algorithms, thrive in challenging environments. This adaptability is showcased in applications like space exploration, where control systems enable spacecraft to autonomously navigate and respond to unforeseen conditions in the vastness of space. In humanitarian efforts and disaster response, control systems contribute to efficient logistics, communications, and resource allocation. These systems help organizations respond swiftly to crises, optimizing the deployment of aid and resources to affected areas. Understanding the real-world impact of control systems is not only about recognizing their technological prowess, but also appreciating their role in addressing global challenges and improving the quality of life. As we navigate through the intricacies of control theory, envision its far-reaching influence on the technology that shapes our world. As we conclude this section, Remember that these examples provide a glimpse into the vast landscape of control system applications. They showcase the versatility and power of transfer functions of block diagrams as indispensable tools in the engineer's toolkit. In wrapping up, we've taken a deeper dive into the world of transfer functions and block diagrams. Remember, these tools are not just abstract concepts. They're practical instruments that engineers use daily to design and optimize control systems. As we bring our exploration of transfer functions and block diagrams to a close, it's essential to reflect on the valuable insights we've gained. Today, we embarked on a journey through the abstract realms of mathematical representations and graphical tools, aiming to demystify the language of control systems. Transfer functions emerged as our reliable narrators, distilling complex system dynamics into manageable expressions. These mathematical storytellers provide a high-level view, allowing engineers to predict and manipulate system performance without getting entangled in the intricacies of differential equations. We've witnessed how changes in transfer functions act as levers, influencing dynamic performance of our system. Block diagrams, the visual architects, offered a powerful language for representing the intricate web of interactions within dynamic systems. By connecting blocks that symbolize various components and processes, engineers gain a roadmap to navigate the complex landscape of control systems. The beauty lies in their simplicity. Block diagrams transform abstract control strategies into tangible graphical representations that make the invisible visible. Our journey wasn't confined to the theoretical realm. Through practical examples, we ventured into the real-world applications of these tools. Whether it was controlling the temperature of a chemical process or designing a cruise control system for a car, Transfer functions and block diagrams prove to be indispensable instruments. They empower engineers to model, analyze, and optimize systems for a wide array of applications, showcasing the versatility and relevance of these concepts. As we conclude today's discussion, remember that our odyssey through the vast landscape of control theory is far from over. The tools we've explored are foundational, setting the stage for more advanced topics that await us in the future episodes. We'll continue to unravel the complexities, discover new tools, and apply our understanding to solve real-world engineering challenges. So, let's embrace this exploration. Whether you're a seasoned engineer or a budding enthusiast, the world of control theory invites you to delve deeper, to question, to experiment, and to innovate. Armed with transfer functions and block diagrams, you're equipped with more than just tools. You have a language to converse with the dynamic systems that shape our technological landscape. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this video informative and thought-provoking. This is the point where others tell you, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content just like this. But we know that that kind of thing is for losers. Don't be a loser. And as always, I welcome your feedback and ideas for future videos in the comments section below. Until next time, 
Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep embracing your inner nude, dude.